Okay, I want to show you the wa the way to make a water level today. We've got a two gallon bucket and a lid that seals well. We've got these little black corks, the rubber corks. They're going to go in this lid. I'll show you that later. Uh, we've got a piece of PVC, one inch PVC. That's going to be for a story pole. I've got two one inch caps to cap that story pole. That's just to keep the dirt from going in the ends when you're out in the field. Got a, uh, a roll of Velcro. This is a adhesive backed Velcro. And there's an adhesive backed tape measure that's going to go on the story pole also. And this is a valve stem that I got from the local tire store. This is just for like a truck wheel. It's got a little bend in it so that they can reach in there and get the air on those deep wheels. This is going to be a convenience for us because we don't want this sticking out of the bucket too far. So that bend helps. And I've got 50 feet of clear 3 8 outside diameter hose. And it's got a quarter inch inside diameter that will fit on that little valve stem. And all that together will make a very good water level. And I think it's just about 30 bucks altogether. So I'm going to cut this piece of PVC at 8 feet because you don't really need a story pole any longer than 8 feet. This is a little trick for drawing a straight line on a pipe. Just use a piece of bar stock or angle iron. I drew the line so that I can run the uh, adhesive backed tape measure straight along the pipe. I cut the end off the bottom down there to make up for the difference between the cap and the ground because you want the inch increments to be zero base from the bottom of the cap. This is just the Velcro. I use the hook side of the Velcro on the story pole because it doesn't collect dirt as much as the loop side. Here's the loop side with adhesive going on. I think I did seven or eight of these. So this is quick release. You can pull the pipe off and use it without the story pole. Very convenient. So these are the holes in the bucket for air relief when you're filling it. You have to remove the valve so the water will flow freely through the valve stem. You can have them do it for you if you don't have the tool. You also have to drill the hole at the right diameter so that that little rubber grommet actually compresses and seals well. So it's kind of a compression fitting. I used dark purple food coloring to help see the water line. There's a bunch of ways you can use a water level. But they're all based off of the same principle. You've got a bucket of water and the elevation of that water is the same as filling the room with water and you're going to measure down from that water line to whatever you want for reference. You can also use it in ways to create benchmarks with your hose. So that's what I'm going to do on this wall here. I'm just going to show you how you can really easily mark level on a wall. Now this is a pretty small area. You wouldn't really need it for this but if you wanted to go all the way around the room this hose could reach and you could mark a benchmark all the way around the entire room with this method. And I just use a little piece of wood to cork this. Okay, so these are the marks we just drew. There's one here and one here, and I've driven nails into those. And I'm going to show you the level line. Oh, 
But what if you wanted to draw a plumb line? But all you have to do is draw a 90 degree line to your plumb line. And you just do that by drawing a couple arcs. In this case, it's about 44 and a half inches. 44 and a half, a little under 44 actually. So we'll go 23. So those two crosshairs, draw a line through them and you end up with a plumb line and you can do that anywhere you need to. So this is another way to use a water level where you actually take the level of the water in the reservoir and match the elevation that you want to mark. And you would do this for like a drop ceiling where you have a lot of obstructions and you can't use a laser because it just keeps getting blocked by those obstructions. So you can run around the hose where you wouldn't be able to see that with the laser. I have found the easiest way to match the elevation is to just clamp your hose. I've got a line right here that represents the elevation I want to hit. And I usually just somehow clamp my hose to where I'm trying to mark it. Get the plug out. And I just wait and see how that ends up. And in this case, it looks like it's going to be about 3 eighths low, 3 eighths of an inch low. So what I usually use is some cardstock. This is just some cardboard. And I'm just going to grab what I think is about 3 eighths of an inch. And just slide it under my reservoir. And I'll wait for this to settle. And you can see this is sloshing a whole lot, but it still doesn't move a lot in the hose. I think we're good. So now I've got some tape over here that represents the wires that I would mark. So this could be anywhere in the room now. It's as easy as that. I want to touch on an easy mistake that can be made. I know I've done it before. Uh, when you're out in the field and you're measuring pier blocks and you're, you're spot checking each one and trying to get an elevation, uh, sometimes you think the larger number on the ruler is actually the higher location when it's the opposite. So in this case, I've got this story pole sitting on a bucket and it's reading 31. Now I'm going to go to the floor with the story pole, and you can see the water level increases in numeric value, and that's showing the difference between the bucket and the floor, in this case about 13 and a half. So if the bucket was a pier block and I wanted to go to a lower location and put a leg there, I would cut the leg at 13 and a half. This is just a floor plan of the shop, and those red spots are just spot locations that I want to check. So I'm going to run around and do that real quick right now. Okay, so you can see 44 inches is what was what this measured here, and that's zero. That was the tallest point in the room. This one's 44 and 3 eighths. That means it's 3 eighths lower than this point. This was 44 and a quarter. That's a quarter inch lower than this point. This one's 44 and 7 eighths. That means it's 7 eighths lower than that point. And you go on all the way down. This one is an inch and an eighth lower than that point. So we can tell we've got a pitch from here to here going down towards the garage door, which is great because if you have to wash your floor out, it goes out the front door. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just going to look for the high point and then find all the lower piers and do the math in between to establish the post heights. And you can see here the no post upper right hand corner is set at zero and that's the highest one. It has the smallest measurement. And the rest of them have larger measurements, the 26 and the 16th on two of them, and 28 and 5 eighths on the lowest. And then I've written down the difference between the 23 and a quarter in those measurements inside the pier block locations for the leg heights. So if you want to cut a level area for like a slab or a footing, uh, you would end up using the story pole where you establish a level and then you dig the ground to where that story pole always measures the same. So here I'm just going to cut this little pad and I established the lowest point and now I'm just going around to make sure that the measurement stays the same on the story pole at all locations. 
I like to dig a perimeter and then just kind of carve out the middle part. You take fewer measurements that way. A few more checks here and I'm almost done. There we go. So that pretty much does it for making and the basics of using a water level. The principles that I showed you today can be reused in a lot of different ways. This is a very versatile tool. You'll find that you can use it under crawl spaces, to level foundations, a lot of things beyond what I did today, but using the same principles. I'll have the tools and materials listed in the description. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.